Always, actually. Um, we both uh, read to each other uh, during the course of a book. Um, when Paul's writing a novel, he reads to me at intervals of about a month, month and a half, two months, something like that. And he will take a, you know, we'll have a batch of, of, of the story, read it to me aloud, and listen to what I have to say. Uh, earlier in my uh, life as a writer, I had a tendency to hoard my manuscripts from Paul and not show him anything until I had a complete draft. And then he would usually uh, read it silently and talk to me afterwards. Um, in the last few years, the last few, last three books, I've read to him as I'm going along, chunks of 50 to 70 pages, and get his feedback. So this is very important for us. You know, everyone needs a reader. And I just happen to be married to mine, and he happens to be married to his. Uh, the good thing about the two of us is that I um, and he are very free to be brutal if we feel it's necessary. And I think that all works because um, there's an essential respect always for the project of the other person. So what you're really talking about is, does this help the overall project, or is there a weakness here? And I don't think that in either case we've ever rejected um, the other person's uh, suggestion. Uh, I have resisted <laughs> a couple of times, but in the end, I think he's always been right. And um, I had a, I, with one novel, he read me three endings before I thought he hit on the one that really worked. I'm better at this now. Um, I've always been extremely disciplined in the sense that I can wake up early, sit at my desk, and work for hours and hours every day. This has never been a problem. What I've understood as the years have gone on is that the best place for me, anyway, to be when I'm writing is in a state of great relaxation and openness. And I think when you're in that state, um, all kinds of unconscious material can become available. Uh, for me, the danger is being tight, being, you know, constipated in a sense. And that will create constipation. That will create, you know, a day of looking at a paragraph, <laughs> erasing it, writing another one, and getting rid of that. Uh, so, and I think of this as a state of play, that you really um, are open to the creative possibilities of what will happen, what can happen. And uh, both, I think, both playing in children and fantasizing in teenagers. I don't know if you, you're much closer to your teenage years than I am, but, um, but that, uh, those years are particularly prone to all kinds of fantasies, especially about the future. What you know? What am I going to do? Oh, the oh, the beloved. You know, you know all kinds of, of fantasies. And I think that writing novels is comes straight out of those two. Uh, first, the childhood play, and then the adolescent fantasy, to making art but that the process is very similar. And you need to be open, um, loose, and let yourself play in order for the work to happen. Mm -hmm.